Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. Go to have a look at the weather for an exchange of 14 days for today's second video. So day 10 will take us to the 11th of uh, March. We'll be able to extend out the amount of extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe run down a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us well into the latter stages of uh, March. Well, it's the end of March, uh, of course. So I'll get time for that for you in a moment. We'll begin with the stratospheric uh, developments. Just say so at first, video only saves our 6 a.m. upload, so please check out that one if you'd like to do that. And please like, share, subscribe on videos, and thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for uh, Gareth's Web. It's first day of March today, of course, first day of uh, Meteorological Spring. So happy first day of Meteorological Spring. Um, to all of you, uh, right, I'm going to turn it off, I'll turn off webcam. Uh, right, I'm going to start off with, uh, latest situation in terms of the stratosphere. So, uh, still quite the cold temperatures, these are the blue colours here, over the top of the, uh, North Pole in the stratosphere at 10 hectare. Warming has taken place, um, <coughs> excuse me, warming has pl taken place over, uh, Russia and Siberia. Of course, that hasn't infiltrated into the Arctic and the North Pole. However, we are going to see those, uh, sort of milder, warmer green and yellow colours infiltrating from Siberia in towards the uh, North Pole and Greenland and Canada that uh, displaces the blue colours of cold temperatures. They get pushed out into northern parts of uh, Europe and uh, northern Russia. Um, and yeah, you know, 10 hectares, significant warming of the stratosphere is on the way. Uh, that gets us up to the 9th of March, which is the latest GFS forecast, of course. If we extend out beyond that, this is how uh, the latest 6 z uh, deals with things. So uh, again, those blue colours try to come back, but never really make it back into the North Pole and the Arctic. We keep uh, just generally quite a mild, warm temperature going at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over North Pole, right way up to the 17th of March, just as far as we go to with the latest GFS run. So clearly from where we're starting right now, with these blue colours, these cold temperatures at 10 HPA that we've had all winter, and that's associated with the uh, strong polar vortex, of course. Um, from where we are right now, very significant changes coming up in terms of what's happening in the stratosphere over the next uh, couple of weeks. This is going to involve a sudden stratospheric warming, just going to involve uh, a significant warming of the stratosphere um but it'll be interesting to see whether this has the same effect as a sudden stratospheric warming in the end uh this is from university of berlin again te uh, temperature forecast of the ecmwf model um so today first of march is how things are currently looking again there's that warming over russian siberia at 10 hpa in the stratosphere uh north pole itself is, is uh, highlighted on, on these charts helpfully uh that's that black x just there blue colors of course over pole itself uh so the cold temperatures go on for the time being but as we get to 240 hours out which is uh the 10th of march is generated last night um look how much warmer it is over the north pole and i've got these red colors here infiltrating in from uh russian siberia into uh the pole so again uh ecm also showing along with gfs that significant warming uh, the strategy if we go lower down to 30 hpa that's closer to the troposphere of course there we see but at the moment very cold uh with with those blue colors there at 30 hpa uh, in, the, in the stratosphere, uh, but as we go out to, uh, so that's 1st of March, as we go out to the 10th of March, uh, we see again uh, that there is like a significant uh, change that is uh, appearing there, and, and we get uh, 30 HPA, and, and we lift the temperature up, but it's still quite cold actually, still quite cold at that point, but but there's quite a significant developments are on uh, the way, so uh, yeah, you know, we are going to be seeing a winding down of this year's polar vortex. These are the this is the zone of wind and zone of flux forecast uh, from the University of Berlin as well. So at the moment, the, the blue line here is 10 HPA zone of winds, red line uh, 30 HPA zone of winds at the moment. Got a strong zone of wind, but look at this the forecast is for the zone of winds to drop out maybe in reverse for a day or two um, in, in the second week of March. Again, that is associated with that warming of the stratosphere. That's bo uh, both 10 and 30 HPA as well. So, so this is a significant warming of the stratosphere that is going to weaken zone of winds a lot over the next, uh, over the next week to 10 days, definitely. Um, and we'll wait and see then what impacts that has as we go further on 
into the spring. So significant developments stratosphere-wise. Sectoring temperature is in for February. So this is the CT page from uh, the UK Met. So the sectoring temperature came in at 6.8. 6.8 was where we came out. Central in temperature for this February. That actually is the warmest, mildest February since 2002 when we had 7.07 7 degrees. So it's been uh, mildest uh, February for 20 years. Can you believe about what was February uh, for 20 years and um, only just though because we did have uh, 6.7 there in 2019 so we just put one of a degree uh, above that but we have had a lot of mild Februarys over the past few years so yeah warmest February for 20 years rounding off what has been a very mild winter obviously the guys were with his winter forecast uh, completely busted um, and less said about that uh, the better. We will have more to say about that, I suppose, in the next few weeks as we evaluate the forecast, uh, of course. But uh, yeah, warmest February for 20 years. Very significant developments uh, there. These are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, the red line is 30 year upper air temperature average for Belfast. We're starting off a little bit below average at the moment. We go a bit above average in the next couple of days. But after that, quite cool uh, though, as we go through the first week of March and into the second. Second week of March is quite close to average um, with those temperatures. Really, but I think the main thing, rather than temperatures, is more more in way of precipitation. So uh, regular rainfall spikes coming up from like the second third of March onwards all the way to the 17th. So it does look quite wet for Belfast. Of course, that's going to be exposed to the Atlantic. But I think we are going to be in for quite an unsettled spell, you know, as we go through. The first, uh, the first half of March. Temperature anomalies are actually coming out a little bit below average, something we're not seeing for quite some time. So from the 1st to the 9th of March, actually below average with our temperature anomaly. Most parts of Europe also looking below average with the temperature anomaly. It's strange, isn't it? It's been so mild through much of this winter. And then we hit the first day of mid or spring and the anomalies go below average. Just typical uh, that really, isn't it? Precipitation anomalies from the 1st to the 9th of March, drier than average in most areas. Maybe a little bit surprising given the graph we was just looking at for Belfast. Even Northern Ireland looks a little bit on the driest side. Perhaps slightly wet and average for the southwest of England. The latest wind flow map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that at the moment today we're actually under a ridge of high pressure, but I don't think that ridge is going to be hanging about for too much uh, longer. Right, we'll go through the chart data in a moment. In fact, let's do that right now, shall we? So the latest uh, UK Met Euro run uh, looks like this for mid uh, for mid. Night on Friday. High pressure trying to get going over Scandinavia, but we'll be under like a shallow trough of uh, low pressure then. Into Saturday and Sunday, high pressure takes over uh, across and to the east. Actually, it does pull the wind into the east, but it's not a particularly cold easterly. Uh, this. And then we head off into the beginning of next week. That high pressure gradually recedes back to Scandinavia as low pressure begins to move in from off the Atlantic. Relatively mild with that. Wind's coming up from the south, but obviously it wouldn't take all that much of an adjustment for winds to turn to the southeast or possibly even into the east with that area of high pressure taking over across Scandinavia. Icon uh, is looking like this again. High pressure trying to build at midnight on Friday over Scandinavia and that does take over into the weekend, albeit it's not a classic Scandinavian high, so just bring like a gentle easterly into the country and it's a relatively mild easterly wind as well I think that into the uh, beginning of next week again the high pressure just begins to recede away a little bit lower pressure starts coming in off the Atlantic uh, the low pressure is struggling a little bit uh, that brings rain into the west and again it wouldn't take all that much of an adjustment to get wind into like a southeast which could be quite cold coming in from off the continent so we hope our next week um, you know, it could turn a little bit colder than you might think looking at these charts if the wind starts drifting in from off the uh, continental landmass. The GFS midnight run, again, with the area of high pressure over Scandinavia at midnight on Friday. That high pressure then takes over into weekend. A little bit further north with that high pressure as well with the GFS midnight run. That starts to pull the wind into more of an easterly uh, then. And it's a rather colder easterly too, I think. Upper air temperature showed the minus 5 cells ice firm drifting in from the east. Probably colder spring wintry showers into eastern areas. Early next week, the high pressure... 
Uh, so it sticks around to our east over Scandinavian low pressure, really struggling to get him from off the Atlantic. And a proper old battle then ensues through the middle of next week. So we've got high pressure over Scandinavia, low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. We're bringing him away from like a southerly, southeasterly direction. Our uh, temperatures aren't that cold, uh, but uh, the dew points would be. They're coming in, you know, the wind is coming in from off the continent, which is pretty cold at this point, I think. That's day 10, uh, 11th of March. Again, with deep low pressure in the Atlantic, battling with high pressure over Scandinavia. Scandinavia winds are coming up from like a southerly southeast direction. Actually, the upper air temperatures turned a bit colder at that point. So the cold air started to win the battle. And look how cold the dew points are. So you would look at that chart and think it's probably quite mild, actually. Winds are coming up from the south. But because the continent is cold and there is a southeast sea component, actually, that's the kind of thing that could bring snow, uh, particularly to more western areas. So maybe a bit of a snow scenario there. Uh, around uh, 10th and the 11th of uh, March. Unlikely to verify, but, you know, it's the kind of thing that can happen. Uh, beyond that, though, the Atlantic breaks through. The high pressure recedes back into the west of Russia. Low pressure comes in off the Atlantic, and that starts to bring increasingly unsettled, wet, windy weather in off the Atlantic, but also relatively uh, mild conditions as well. This is how the uh, Jeff S6Z is looking. Again, we find high pressure sort of taking over into the weekend. Not as far north, though, with that high pressure from midnight run has it so this is a milder scenario for the weekend uh to the beginning of next week although we do pull in a little bit of a south bc there around tuesday and uh, then you know go through into day 10 and lower pressure is coming in off the atlantic a little bit more strongly compared to midnight run. so it's a very subtle pattern it might get cold next week with chances of some snow it might be relatively mild and unsettled uh, next week. It really is one of those knife edge, uh, you know, subtle type patterns. Into the more extended range, the uh, 6Z again takes low pressure down to Spain and Portugal, becomes cut off. So this high pressure over Scandinavia is proving to be quite stubborn, actually, and is causing uh, a fair few problems within the model output. Uh, again, the 6Z looks like that for Monday, 14th of March, long way out now, of course, but still that high pressure to our east and northeast has an influence and he's blocking off uh, the Atlantic. And then we get through to the very end of the GFS uh, 6 z run, which uh, looks like this for the 17th of March. Looking quite blocked, doesn't it, to our north? Definitely, you know, we might start to set up some normal blocking, probably as a result of the stratospheric warming. So um, a lot to keep an eye on, I think, through March. I think we're going to have a different pattern with this March compared to what we've had through the winter so far. But whether that yields anything particularly cold or whether it's mild and wet remains to be seen. GM looks like this. Uh, again, a, a high pressure takes over during the weekend. Not as far north with that high pressure as the GFS output has it though. And then next week turns wet and windy uh, really. Oh, actually that is yesterday's GM run. So we'll forget about that. That didn't happen. Right, let's move on. I don't know why that's updated. Let's move on to the ECM WF. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video by the way, please just smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much everybody. Um, for doing that, for actually, we could go back to Metro Seal and see if the GM is updated there. Why don't we do that? So, where is the GM? There it is. Um, right, yeah, it's updated there. So, let's see what the GM uh, shows in terms of uh, today's mid night run. So this is uh, beginning of next week. High pressure again takes over across the country and to our door. Brings the wind into more of an east sea. Remember high pressure slips away next week. Lower pressure coming in off the Atlantic. And clearly that is a milder, wetter and windier type scenario. Okay, so clearly that is a milder, wetter and windier type scenario from the GEM. Uh, you know, uh, next week compared to like the GFS output and even sort of UK Met and uh, what not. Right, ECM looking like this. Uh, uh, on Friday, high pressures over Scandinavia starting to build in. That sort of takes over into the weekend across the country. Winds are in from the east, but it's not a particularly cold easterly. Probably a lot of cloud and damp weather, I think, for the weekend. Early next week, starts to take high pressure a little bit further north towards Scandinavia. And uh, we do start to pull in rather colder, sort of south -easty type wind from Tuesday through to Wednesday. This high pressure set to our east and northeast. Day 10, though, uh, breaks the Atlantic through. The high pressure sort of collapses and Atlantic breaks through of mild southwesterly. So, again, you know, it really is on a knife edge. What's going to happen next week? We might get quite a cold week next week but also it could be a non-event and we just finish up with uh, a fair amount of grey relatively mildish weather 
Uh, right, this is a precipitation forecast based on the ECM run from Tobacco.com. Plenty of rain over the next day or two for southern and western southwestern areas. Most of it will be light, but there could be a few heavy bursts mixed in. That carries on to the end of the week as well. Then the high pressure takes over into the weekend, bringing quite a dry weather with it. And uh, then we start pulling those rather colder sort of southerly southeasterlies for a while early next week before the milder southwesties return with the outbreaks of rain. These are the options on the table from the ECM ensembles for day 8, which is the 8th of uh, March. So 22 months. So this is like when, if we're going to get cold from the east, it will happen, I think, around the 8th, 9th, 10th, uh, uh, you know, of uh, March, that sort of period. So 22 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure seen to our east, low pressure to our west. That's drawing in like a southerly south east. It could be quite chilly. Uh, 16 have high pressure further north over Scandinavia and bringing more of an easterly, uh, so that could be cold, that does include the operational run, and then 13 again with high pressure even further north between Iceland and Norway, low pressure down to the southwest, and that could be the coldest and most wintry scenario, so it's just how far north that high pressure is. Uh, around day 8. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We get us to the 11th of March. 19 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure between Scandinavia and Greenland. Low pressure is in off the Atlantic. That means quite a bit of rain uh, with it. Of course, to the north, it would be quite cold, and that could bring snow into Scotland. 16 have high pressure just rolling in off the... Low pressure, should say, rolling in off the Atlantic. That brings mild, wet, windy weather. And then uh, another 16 have high pressure over Scandinavia. Low pressure is pushed out to the west and that could deliver a little bit of snow. That's like what the GFS midnight run was showing. That could deliver a little bit of snow as the low pressure battles with the high pressure if the air is cold enough over the continent. That's the kind of thing that might deliver a battleground snow event. And then in two weeks time these are the options that we've got. We get us to the 16th of March. 26 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure coming in off the Atlantic bringing relatively mild wet windy weather and 25 have high pressure to our uh, east and low pressure is out to the west and that starts to bring up like a southerly southeasterly could be turning milder with that um it depends how cold the continent is but we're into mid-march by then so i would expect that's probably start to bring some milder air up from the south Last thing to look at is CFS V2. These are 500 millibar hikes broken down into weak periods. The first week period takes from the 1st to the 7th of March. The coming week has high pressure over the country. Brings quite a bit of dry weather with it and could be chilly depending on how much of an easterly wind we pick up. Week 2 looks milder. This is the 8th to the 14th of March with high pressure this time sort of towards Germany. Lower pressure out to the Atlantic. And we're bringing up more of a southwesterly tight wind. So that does look rather milder. Week 3 is going to be the 15th to the 21st of March. Again, low pressure is away to the northwest, and winds are coming up from a southwesterly direction. And then week four is going to be the 22nd to 28th of March. More of a Scandinavian high there, uh, but it is reaching into Western Europe. So, um, yeah, that could be starting to try and get wind into the east. Maybe we set up a cold end to March with easterly winds. Long way out, of course. We have to wait and see. Does look as though March is going to have a different pattern, though, I think, to what we've had through the winter so far. But what that pattern is and what it yields remains to be seen. Right, if you've enjoyed this video, then please give smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment and know about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Web. It's, it's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Right, uh, so that's it for today's uh, video, and it might be here for a couple of days, actually. I've got uh, a little procedure going on with my mouth uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to have uh, a biopsy, actually, on uh, my mouth tomorrow, and uh, it might leave me feeling a little bit... It's only going to be a local anesthetic, but it might think, leave me feeling a little bit sore. So uh, I won't be doing any videos tomorrow, and probably not Thursday. Hopefully we'll be able to get a video done for Friday. If not, it'll be into the weekend. just depends how... Uh, you know, how sore it is with the mouth. But we shall see. I'll keep everybody updated, uh, of course. But uh, that's it for today's video. So anyway, you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And uh, for today's video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.